I want you all to sing with us. The splendor of a king Love in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great Jonah. 
And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That three days and three nights remind us of our Lord and Savior who was in the belly of the earth three days and three nights. Yes. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All the billows and the waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet Will I look again toward thy holy temple? The waters compass me about even to the soul. The depth clothes me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me fell. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. For my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came into thee, into thine holy temple. And look at what we said in verse 9. But he was in a dark, cold, uncomfortable place. But, you know, I've said it before that, that but is a powerful word. And that what comes after the but will overrule what came before the but. You may say, I'm in need, but the Lord is my provider. I'm sick, but the Lord is my healer. I said before, we need to let your but do the talking. But, look what Jonah's but said. But, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is the Lord. And we're going to talk about today that voice of thanksgiving. The voice of thanksgiving. Now, we all face challenges. We all face obstacles. We all face dreams that look like they're not going to come to pass. Now, you got a couple of options. You can either get negative, you can get discouraged, talk about what's not going to work out, what's not going to happen, or you can switch over into praise and thank God that he's still on the throne. You can switch over to praise and thank God that he's still fighting our battle. You can switch over to praise and thank God that he always causes us to try. But a lot of times we say, well, you know what? I have a good attitude as soon as everything picks up. I have a good attitude as soon as the business pick up. I have a good attitude as soon as I get that pay raise. I true up as soon as I get over this health issue. I give God praise when I get through these tough times. But that's not how faith works. You've got to give God praise and then the breakthrough will happen. You've got to chew up first and then things will change in your favor. Praise always precedes the victory. But as long as we're naked, as long as we are discouraged, as long as we're walking around with our heads undown, focus on our problems, that will limit of what our God can do. Look at John. In the belly of a well, in the midst of all these problems, seaweed around his head, smelling bad, dark, probably can't even see, uncomfortable, didn't see a way out, he began to pray. And for the first eight verses, all he talked about was how bad life was. All he talked about was he was in the depths of despair, how he was surrounded by so much turmoil, how he, how he was in the depths of deceit, 
on and on negative, on and on defeated. Sometimes what we call prayer is really just a complaining session. We're just telling God everything that's wrong. Even talking as though God doesn't already know. God, calm this down. God, this boss is getting on my last nerve. God, I can't take these children anymore. God, that husband of mine, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, that wife of mine, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, this community, look at all the drugs, look at all the crime, look at all the violence, look at all the spur. God, look at all, on and on and on. It sounds like we're in a complaining session. God, you know I got to lose these 20 pounds. God, my blood pressure is way too high. That's not prayer. That's just telling God your problem. And although God is concerned about our problems, okay, he's concerned about our problems, he's concerned about what we're going through, God is not necessarily just moved by our problems. He's moved by our faith. He's moved by our faith. And guess what praise is? Praise is faith at work. The scripture says the spirit of faith is in our words. Look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. I believe and therefore I have spoken. And we also believe and therefore we what we speak. Speak. The spirit of faith is in our words. So my question is, turn to neighbor and say, neighbor, what's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth? What is coming <laughs> out of your mouth? And sometimes when people go on and on negative, you turn to say, what is coming out of your mouth? Are you talking about how big your problems are or are you talking about how big your God is? Switch over into a praise. Father, Business is slow, but I want to thank you that you're supplying all of my needs. Yeah. I know you're Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Lord, I'm feeling a little lonely, but I thank you that you're Jehovah Shabbat. Because I know you are everywhere and you're right here. Well, I just need to recognize your presence. You said, after, look at this, after complaining for eight verses, in verse 9, he had a change of heart. After complaining for eight verses, in verse 9, he had a change of heart. Some of us been complaining for 220 verses. <laughs> it's time to have a change of heart. Look what he said in Jonah 2 and 9. But, that's the but talk. But, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. In other words, he's saying, God, in spite of my difficulties, I'm going to offer up to you the sacrifice of praise with a voice of thanksgiving. Sitting in the belly of this well. Instead of complaining, he began to say, Father, I thank you that you're bigger than this difficulty. I know you're still on the throne. You can still get me the way you want me to be. And I'm not going to magnify my problem. I'm going to magnify my God. The next verse says that the well spit him out onto a dry ground. And he went on to fulfill his destiny. The very next verse, the well spit him out on dry ground. And you too may feel like you're in the belly of a whale. 
Now you can complain, you can easily talk about your problems, you can easily talk about how bad the medical report is, you can easily talk about what somebody did to you, but you need to zip up that negative, zip up those defeated words, and switch over into praise. Thank God that he's finding your mouth. Thank him that he's bigger than your problem. Thank him that no devil fault against you shall conquer. You can praise your way on to victory. When you praise the creator of the universe can cause that fish that swallowed you up, that problem, that difficulty that swallowed you up, he can cause that thing to spit you out. But not only spit you out, but spit you out on dry ground. Amen. Think about it. Right. Jonah, that whale, if that whale would have spit him out in the ocean, Jonah could have drowned. But when you praise God with tape, that was meant for your harm, and then use it to advance you. Somebody should throw their hands up now and say, Lord, advance me. Lord, advance my family. Lord, advance my children. Lord, advance our church. Lord, advance our community. We're looking for advancement, Lord. Instead of being a setback, it was a setup for God to promote Jonah. All these things are just a setup for God to promote us. Jonah said, I'm going to offer up the sacrifice of praise. That word sacrifice means I don't feel like doing it. I don't see any sign of this situation improving. Everything in me says I should be depressed. Everything in me says I should be discouraged. Everything in me says I should be complaining. But I know a secret praise is my fate at work. And like Jonah sometimes, and I, I, I'm going to be honest, and I hope you are too, sometimes I don't feel like it. Sometimes when I look out in the world and see all the hatred, and people promote hatred, people benefit from hatred, I don't feel like it. Sometimes when I look out and see all the drug addiction, and not only the drug addiction, but people profiting off of our families being on drugs, I don't feel like it. Sometimes when I look out and see all the political turmoil, and people want a divide so that they can profit off of the divide, I don't feel like it. Sometimes when I look out and look at all the sickness and all the disease and all the mental problems, the emotional problems, the physical problems, sometimes I look out and within uh, people's homes uh, and see brother against brother, sister against sister, people walking around the household of their loved ones, uh, not even speaking to one another, the love of many wax cold. Sometimes, too, uh, it'll be easier for me to hang my head down uh, and say, I don't feel like it today, but I know a secret. Uh, Praise is my faith at work. I know when I praise, it activates God's power. Now, I may not feel like it, may not look good, but like Jonah, I'm going to dig my heels in and I'm going to offer up a sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice means that it costs you something. God, I'm hurt now, but I give you praise. God, I'm lonely, but I give you praise. God, it was a fair what they did to me. They did me wrong, but I give you praise. Nothing get God's attention more than when you should be discouraged in the natural, but you step over into the supernatural. You should be complaining in the natural, but you tip on over into the supernatural. The medical report wasn't good. A friend betrayed you. A co-worker cheated you. But yet and still, you gave God. Gave God the sacrifice of praise. I worked in a ER yesterday did a 24 hour shift guy came in about 2 in the morning this morning he was a diabetic and secondary insurance issues didn't have insurance pray for our nation this healthcare crisis Amen. he had lost a toe just had it amputated still trying to work at this company these shoes so he developed a blist on his foot. Couldn't see his doctor, so he couldn't even get an excuse to be out of work for a few days for the blister to heal up. 
came into the ER, I saw him walking down, dirty clothes and pants and t-shirt and shoe just in this kind of boot thing. But I walked in his room. I'm not gonna lie. When I walked in the room, I thought the first thing he gonna do was complain. But when I walked in the room, he was laid back with a smile on his face. Had a Bible in his lap. So when I walked in the room, I looked at his toad and I looked at him. He looked at his Bible and I looked at his Bible. Then he started telling about what he was reading. He was reading about Moses. And he said it's just amazing to him the relationship that Moses had with his God. The closeness, the fellowship that God would even allow Moses to witness him pass by. And he said, that's what I desire most in my life. He said, yes, his toe is gone, uh, but I'm still able to stand uh, and make a living. That's what he told me. Then he went on and said, one day I'm going to walk around uh, New Jersey. And his blister will be gone at that point. Well, we sat and talked, uh, and we prayed to God for a while. Then I just told him, Stay, keep taking your hand of body, uh, God bless you, and I'm going to give you an excuse to be out for a few days. And he left with that same smile on his face. Then he came in. Uh, I know you may be sick right now. I know things may not be looking good right now. Most people would be negative right now. Most people would be bitter right now. But instead, I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking at you with that song of praise. Uh, you're thanking God for what's right. You're not focused on what's wrong. You're not talking about how big your problems are. You're talking about how big your God is. And when you can offer this sacrifice of praise, you can be assured Almighty God is working in your life. You may not see anything happening, but behind the scenes, God is getting it all wrapped up. Before we came on air this morning, all you saw was a blank screen. But behind the scenes, they were working out. So we can continue this morning. So we can get to the rest of what you this morning. And sometimes all you may see is a blank screen. It's just We're lining it all up. And at that point of time, things were changing your faith. That's what Paul and Silas did. Put in jail for spreading good news. Imagine some of you could say I was got in trouble for doing the right thing. Wasn't fair. They were beaten with rods without a trial. It was unjust, and as they sat in the prison, bloody, as they sat in the prison, bruised, as they sat in that prison uncomfortable, they began to sing praises to God. If you're going to live in victory today, you have to know how to praise in pain. You have to know to praise when you're disappointed. You got to know how to praise when you're lonely. Praise when you went through a lot. After all, we can all give God praise when we're on the mountaintop. We can all give God praise uh, when we have a few bucks in our pocket. We can all give God praise uh, when the children are behaving. The marriages, y'all can give God praise when you feel the spouse is doing right. That's easy, but our attitude should be, I'm going to give him praise, uh, even if I find myself in a low valley. I'm going to give him praise, even if I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, I'm going to praise when the business is up, and I'm going to praise when the business is down. Uh, I'm going to praise when I feel like it, and I'm going to praise even when I don't feel like it. That's the sacrifice of praise. Uh, the sacrifice of praise. I know you don't feel like it, but it's called the sacrifice of praise. As they were sitting in the prison at midnight singing praises to God, as they were sitting in this prison isolated from everyone else, as they were sitting in this crowd of a sudden there was a great earthquake and the prison doors flung open. And right now, church, 
we should be singing praises so that a great earthquake will come, so prison doors will open, and all of our family, all of our friends, all of our community, which are bound in various prisons, mental prisons, emotional prisons, spiritual prisons, that the chains will be broken. And Paul and Silas walked out as free men. They praised their way to victory. The high praises means you thank God with enthusiasm. We should not be thanking God or frowned all up, head hanging down, then praising God. We should be excited just with the opportunity to come and praise God. And God willing, in the weeks ahead, uh, someone will be able to say, I was glad when they said unto me, uh, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, and when you come through these doors, I want you to come uh, with a praise on your mouth. I want you to come with some enthusiasm. I want you to come dancing in his church. Uh, I want the praise team uh, dances to come. around 
around seven times. Uh, don't say a word. Uh, just walk around it from those six days. Don't say a word. Uh, no whispering. Uh, no talking. Uh, no complaining. Uh, and sometimes when we're waiting for God, we should be walking around not complaining. Uh, no whispering. Uh, no bad talking. Uh, no rebellion. Just walking and praying. Uh, walking and praying. Uh, thinking about what God is about to do in your life. And on that seventh day, uh, there was so much excitement. Uh, can you see the enthusiasm on that seventh day? Went around it once, uh, went around it twice, uh, went around with great anticipation. They knew something big was about to happen. And on that seventh time around, uh, the place blew the trumpets. Uh, can you hear the trumpet sound? Uh, then they let out the high praises of God, uh, began to shout, uh, began to cheer, uh, began to sing. Uh, can you say Hosanna in the highest? Uh, high praises to God. God. They begin to shout and cheer, and those walls, uh, those thick walls, uh, those fortified walls uh, came tumbling down. Uh, the people were able to go in, take the city, and make it into the promised land. You know, a lot of times we think, I'll shout after the walls come down. I'll shout after my victory. I'll shout after the promotion. I'll shout after the breakthrough. Tell your name, neighbor. Name. That's backwards. The shout is what activates the power of God. Yes. Now realize that God hears us even when we whisper. But I believe there are some walls that will not come down without the high praises of God coming out of your mouth. You've got to turn up the praise and thank God in a greater way. You've got to declare his goodness over your life. Walk in your home and declare his goodness uh, over your children right now. Uh, walk through your community. Declare his goodness over your community right now. Uh, come on and walk around this church if you want several times. Uh, declare his goodness uh, over this church. Church, uh, God is saying, uh, you're coming into your seventh day. Uh, you're about to enter into your victory lap. Uh, somebody been walking around uh, that wall six times. Uh, you need to have anticipation uh, that God is about to make that wall uh, come fall down. Now, here's the question. What's coming out of your mouth? Oh, Pastor. Oh, Pastor Mo. These walls are so big. I've had this problem for so long. These obstacles are so high. Turn to somebody and say, zip that up. Yeah. And let out some high praises. Yeah. God, I want to thank you that you're bigger than this problem, greater than this sickness, more powerful than this addiction. Father, I thank you that you're fighting my battle for me. If you keep the high praises coming out of your mouth, then like Joshua, you need to get ready. Tell somebody, ready, I'm 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 ready. If you're ready, look at your words and let God know he's a good God. Let God know that you're thankful for what he's done, that you're thankful for your family, that you're thankful for your church, that you're thankful for your community, that you're thankful for your life. walls to come down. Barriers to be broken. Yes. New doors to be open. Yes. Change of addictions to be loose. Dreams to come to pass. I'm going to close with this. Isaiah 54 says, Sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child. Break forth into song and shout for joy. Why would Isaiah tell the barren to sing? This is said, if your dreams have not yet come to pass, if you have unborn promises, if you feel barren, don't sit around in defeat. Don't say too bad, it's never going to happen. God has said, if you're feeling barren right now, more than ever, you need to 
turn up the praise. Praise is the birth position. When you're thankful, when you have a song in your heart, when you go around talking about God's goodness, you're putting yourself in position to give birth to that promise. It should be an attitude. All throughout the day, I want you all to practice gratitude. All throughout the day, practice being grateful. Under your breath, constantly, Lord, I love you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my family. Thank you. Reveal to me, stir up the gift that is within me. And when you have this continual attitude of praise, that's, that's what allow God to do amazing things. That's your faith and work. God bless you. God keep you. Till we meet again, let your life be a life of praise. When they see you on the street, they say, I saw praise. You saw praise today. Oh, yeah. Yes, I saw praise. I saw Sister Shannon just walking through the streets. Just walking on that floor of park. Just singing and praising God. I saw it. He saw praise. Yeah, I went over to this place of business. This young person there was there that's praising God. I saw praise. I saw praise today. Amen. Until we meet again, God bless you.